All right, if you have your Bibles, let's go ahead and open those up. 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. And this is a great verse. Um, all these verses, I, I would recommend picking some of them and memorizing them, putting them to memory. You go, my brain doesn't work. I could never memorize a Bible verse. Oh, you'll be surprised. You can just write it down somewhere, take a picture of it with your phone and your Bible, and just kind of chew on it throughout the day. Read it again and again, and you'd be shocked as the Lord will use God's word to strengthen your mind, to heal it, to get all the junk out, and to, to get the good in. It's so powerful. But today we're in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, and we're talking about that our God is still, God still has the whole world in his hands. You know, picture that for a moment. Picture that in your mind's eye. The whole world, not just your life, your life is in his hands. Your past are in his hands, literally. And the scars in his wrists that he was crucified for your sins, he, your, your, your sins were paid for by Jesus Christ. Your present, he's there with you. He's praying, he's interceding for you. Your future, he's got your life in his hands. But he has the whole world in his hands, and we can trust him. And, and God, listen, as we're going to see today in 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13, God has control even over temptation. Temptation, right? Dun, 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 dun. Temptation. Well, we wish, we say, Lord, don't let me be tempted because I'm not strong enough. Listen, you want to know a little secret? In the Bible, in the Bible, you see these two words, the two T words, temptation, and we see another T word, trial, right? Here in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, we're going to see, listen, we'll read it together. No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted. Notice this, note this, write this, star this, circle this, to be tempted beyond what you are able. God says, I'm not going to give you too much. You can handle it. You go, it doesn't feel like it. You need to ask God for the power of the Spirit and ask Him for strength in the moment. But with the temptation, will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Now, now that, that word temptation there, temptation there in verse 13 is the Greek word parosmos, which means an experience, trial, or proving. Now listen, you can turn there or you could just listen to the New Testament book of James. James, a lot of us love James. I love James. He spoke directly to us. James 1 verse 2, my brethren, brother, brother, sister, listening, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, not temptations, they're trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. That word trial, guess what it is in the Greek? Parosmos, it means an experiment, a trial, a proving. Listen, the word temptation and the word trial is the same. And the reason why is God uses both. God is in control of even temptations. He has them in his hands. You know, he has temptations in, her, in his hands. Sometimes it's so strong when the enemy comes at it with the flood and he throws thoughts our way. The Bible says in Hebrews that our Jesus, when he was on this earth, it says he was tempted in all ways as you and I are. You go, no, not Jesus. There's no way Satan threw a thought at Jesus like I thought yesterday. There's no way. There's no way. Oh, he did. He did. And that's one of the ways, that's one of the reasons why the enemy gets so many Christians to fall into sin. Is because as Satan throws the thought at us, we think, well, it already came into my mind, so I've already sinned, so why not just go do it? That's a lie. That's called deception. It's deception. The Bible says Jesus was tempted in all ways as you and I are, but it was without sin. Meaning, Satan throwing the thought at you is not sin. What you do with that now can become sin. What you and I do with that can become sin. Listen, great little saying. You may want to write this down, re-listen and jot this down. You sow a thought, you reap an action. You sow an action. Sowing is like sowing seed like a farmer does. So in action, then you reap a habit. You reap a habit. All of a sudden, you start doing this more frequently. You sow a habit, you reap a character. Now, this habit that you start doing regularly 
becomes something that's inside of you. It becomes who you are, right? And if you sow that character in your life, if that's who you become, you will reap a destiny. You know, we, we can think of that in a negative way with temptation, but we can also think of that in a positive way with salvation, right? Jesus Christ sowed a thought in your mind, the word of God, that God loves you, that he could forgive you of your sins. And you, you took that thought and you took an action. You repented from sin. You said, metanoia, I'm gonna turn away from my old life and I'm gonna turn towards God, towards his word. I'm gonna believe that God is in control. I'm gonna believe that God created the world. I'm gonna believe that Jesus is the savior of the world. I'm gonna believe that he's got everything under control, that God's the one that can heal my marriage, heal my family, my children, heal me inside, deliver me from sin. And you then, you sowed that action and that action started to reap a habit. All of a sudden you're like, man, I go to church on Sunday. You know, some of you guys are real radical. You know, you go to church on Sunday for an hour and a half and you go to church on Wednesday for an hour and a half. I mean, three hours a week, you are, you are serious, serious Christians. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And man, I've decided to follow Jesus. You're on par with Chinese Christians getting killed in the streets. You are on fire. No, I'm just kidding. You get the point. But you sow a habit. Now all of a sudden you're doing it. You're reading your Bible. You're listening to the devotions. You're, man, your life is changing. You saw that habit. All of a sudden, you reap, you reap a character. <laughs> all of a sudden, it's not what you do. It's not just a habit. Now it becomes like, this is who I am. Somebody says you're a Christian. You're like, yeah, I am. That's right. Uh-huh. Not ashamed to say it, of course. You're not. You reap a character. And what happens when you sow a character? You reap a destiny. You reap a destiny. Heaven's your home. Peace is your inheritance, right? Power of God. Your resources expand because you realize God's your father. You, you realize, man, we, 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 we go forth in love, the love of God. We preach the gospel. I believe this book holds all all wisdom and knowledge. I, I, everything I need to know, God's already showed me. I just have to open the book. Amen, you reap a destiny. So, no temptation's overtaking you. Even temptation, God is in control over. When temptation comes, understand God's in control of that. It's not like Satan, you know, is ravaging and can do whatever he wants. God's in control. He's allowing it. He's looking. He says, son, daughter, all right, ask me for power today. Ask me for strength. Ask me for wisdom. Ask me, say, Lord, show me the way of escape. Show me the way of escape. And when he shows you, don't go, that's a way of escape. This is how you get out of there. But I don't really want to. I'm going to stay here in my sin. No, <laughs> go. It's like, go by, run, right? David stood face to face with Goliath and he took him down. But when Joseph, Joseph was there and, you know, Potiphar's wife came and says, you know, hubba hubba, right? He said, whew. He says, come sleep with me. Joseph said, goodbye, and he was the roadrunner. Beep, beep, gone, right? Out of there. You do the same. God's with you. He loves you. He has better plans for you than you have for yourself. Believe him for that today. He's still got the whole world in his hands. You're driving around thinking it's all on you. You're on the good ship salvation. He is leading the way. Just stick with him. And Father, I pray, bless your people. Fill them with your Holy Spirit, even now today to believe, to receive, as your word says, that you have even temptation under control. That we, if we trust you, you will deliver us. So Father, bless your people with this in Jesus' name, amen.